The ocean is the largest living space on Earth, and two-thirds of it is owned by no one. These are the high seas, beyond the reach of national laws, the domain of the whales. How do you protect a place so vast, so remote, and for which no one is responsible? Well, first, you need to know what needs protecting. The high seas are vast, deep, and dark. The surface layers are home to more familiar creatures. Albatross above, fish beneath, tiny krill, and giant whales. Which is the most important to protect? Perhaps it's the plants. Phytoplankton, the microscopic floating plants of the high seas. What they lack in size, they make up for in numbers. Plankton blooms can be so dense and vast, they can be seen from space. They're so numerous, they create as much oxygen as all the world's forests and grasslands combined. They also soak up vast quantities of carbon, making them a crucial ally in our fight against climate change. But how do you protect phytoplankton? In the high seas, essential nutrients are scarce, and everything, plankton included, has a tendency to sink into the darkness below, where no plant can grow. Enter the whales. They mix up the water, flicking the sinking plankton back into the sunlight. Astonishingly, this mixing by marine animals from whales to jellyfish is locally equivalent to the mixing caused by winds and waves and tides. Whales also make another contribution to the high seas circle of life. They defecate at the surface fertilizing the sunlit shallows and fueling the growth of plankton. The plankton feeds fish and krill, and the fish and krill feed whales. The whales then recycle the nutrients back to where they're most needed. So, for the plankton to thrive, it's the predators that need protecting. Last century, we nearly lost the whales. Just in time, we called off the hunt. But we're still hunting the high seas' other predators. Tuna, 